Hey guys, it's Blaze here and I'm back for a new tutorial video. This one, we're going back to the um, the combo tutorial. And this one, we're going to maybe... Uh, blah, 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 blah. We are going to be making a Super Smash Brothers style tutorial. Uh, or sorry, a Super Smash Brothers style combo tutorial. Uh, but before I actually get into it, I would first of all like to thank Ben, Benjamin from uh, Heartbeat Studio, as well as Ryan from RM2K Dev. Hopefully I didn't get your names wrong. Uh, this is like the third take that I've done for this video. But if you have a look at what's on screen right now, you can see uh, a Naruto sprite, which is actually from a very similar game as Smash Brothers. It's actually called uh, Jump Stars. And this is Naruto, obviously from the Naruto series. And we can see that he can move left and right. He can block and he can also attack. Now, they're all well and good if they're separate actions, but have a look at I'm not pressing any other keys. I'm just going to press attack key and have a look at the state number, right? So right now we're in idle and we're moving left and right. But if I press the attack key, he does a punch and he goes to state three. If I hold the down key, then he goes into state two, which is blocking. And if I press any one of these directions, whether it's up, down, left or right, and I press attack, he plays a different animation based on that. Now you can turn this into a fully fledged game using the logic that I'm going to show you today. But before we get into that, let me show you the logic map. Now you can pause it here and because this is pretty self-explanatory, at least I think so, pause it here, have a look at what's going on and then I'll explain it. Okay. All right. So what we're looking for here is like, we're looking for input. So for not pressing any other key, or if we're pressing up, or if we're going forward, which should be left or right, or if we're going down, which is basically guard, um, then what will happen is if we're going uh, left or right, then he'll run. If we're holding down guard, then obviously, uh, sorry, if we are holding the down key, then he goes into the guard state. Uh, but in any other case, it doesn't do anything. When we combine these different inputs with the attack key, then he'll play a different animation as well as that will also have its own sort of set of collision checks and other things to do. But for now, we're just looking at the collision checks in general. Uh, let's have a look. Let me just check my timing and see if I'm still recording. And I am. Uh, let's have a look at the actual object. So in our room, we just have one object and that's really all that, all that does. And in the create event, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a state machine. Now, again, I'd like to thank Benjamin from uh, Heartbeat Studio for helping me out indirectly with this. Uh, he's got a video of his own in his RPG for Beginners series. But basically what we've got here is a state machine and we're setting it to one of the scripts that I've written up, which is basically the ready script. We're then setting the image speed or the initial image speed to 0.17. I've found that that works really well. And then we set the input which again, from the logic map uh, to idle, basically doing nothing. And the action is ready, again, doing nothing. So let's have a look at what we've got here. These are the macros. If you've never used macros in Game Maker, this would probably be very useful uh, knowledge to have. Macros are basically read-only variables. Essentially, they're variables that you can't change once you set them. So I've got idle, forward, up and down as my input um, macros, and I've given them a value of zero, one, two, and three. Really, it doesn't matter what um, what value you give them, considering that they're just uh, for the purpose of a state machine. But if it's something different, like maybe time or something like that, then you might want to give it a proper value. I also have ready, light attack, and heavy attack. Now, obviously, these are the actual attack keys um, whether we're pressing an attack key or not. Um, pretty sure you can make the link there. So if we're ready, we're not actually doing any attack. Light attack and heavy attack are pretty self-explanatory. Let's have a look at this uh, array system or this array setup that I've got. And you can see that inside the brackets, I've got two separate variables. That's because these are, let me just pull up my timer. Good, five minutes. That's because these are 2D arrays. If you think about a 2D array like coordinates, you have, uh, well, two coordinates here. You've got X and Y, right? And they change depending on where we are in the map. Now that's essentially all that it is. That's what it's there for. 
Um, this 2D array system is basically an X value and a Y value. That's all that it really does. And we have a combination of each of those, right? So we have idle. Again, let me pull up my macros. We have a combination of idle plus ready. Basically, it's doing nothing. If we're pressing forward or basically left or right and we're not doing anything, then he'll go into the run. He'll play the run animation. And if we press down and ready, then we, he just goes into, he plays the guard animation too. Again, it's the same concept, but this time we're using the light attack. So if we're going to the light attack, then the, uh, the object will play the right sprite. Now, keep in mind that this is pretty basic. Um, as your game gets bigger and bigger, obviously it'll have different entries, but uh, the setup is pretty much the same. So let's close those. That's all in the create event. Again, I'd like to thank Ben because <laughs> the original version of this was like huge. It was massive. There was uh, uh, switch statements everywhere uh, and it was really messy and not very beginner friendly. So in this, uh, we have this uh, function called script execute, which is much easier to use than using a switch statement, much easier to read. Um, but it basically does the job of a switch statement. So what it does is it takes the current state. In this case, when we create it, we go into the state ready. And it just put, it just runs that script over and over again. And then we change our sprite according to input and action. Uh, I will explain that later once I get to, once I get through this. And then in the animation end event, this is the only place that I've had a need for switch statements, at least for this video. Um, and here we basically tell them to, in the guard state, then we're gonna tell them to stop animating uh, at the end of the animation. And then in the case of attack, uh, at the end of the attack animation, we need to reset the image speed back to 0.17. We need to change the action back to ready as well as the state back to ready. Now you can see that there is a difference in the colors because one is the macro and the other is the script. And of course, uh, in the draw event, we're just getting him to draw itself and we have some debugging going on too. But you don't need to have the debugging. What you do need to have if you do have a draw event is the draw self um, piece of code. And that's really all that it does. So here we have the get input. You can see that I have left and right mapped to A and D. So basically I have WASD set up. And right now I just have one attack key, which is shift. Uh, that's because I don't have all the attack animations. But really, once you make the game, um, really the difference would be like light attack and heavy attack. Nothing too different there. And you would obviously just assign them to different keys. Um, again, uh, I've got them set up to be check pressed instead of just holding the key down. And that's all that it is. So, you know, pause the video and read through my code at any given point in time. Uh, I'm taking my time to explain it uh, so that you guys can get the most out of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, we have the ready um, script. So this is one of our states. And if you come and have a look at back here, you can see that our initial state is the ready state. Basically, if it's not doing anything, we're here in this uh, script. We're running this script over and over again, you know, 60 times a second um, inside the step event. So we're setting the state to that. Now, here we have input checking. So if we're moving left or right, again, feel free to pause the video at any given point in time because you'll learn from that. Uh, as well as my explanations. If our horizontal value, basically, if we're moving left, then we need to scale the image left. If we're moving right, we scale it right. Um, I know some people would rather have a different sprite for going left and right, uh, but this is just a tutorial. It's And it's not a complete, like, this is how you build a fighting game in Game Maker tutorial either. This is just a foundation thing to help you guys get settled and get you guys going with the combos. Um, and then obviously if it's greater than zero and make sure that you use else if um, because it's it's related to this first one here. 
So if the horizontal or the horiz is greater than zero, we obviously want to turn the image um, to the right. Uh, we want to flip it that way. And if we're using uh, move uh, or idle, so if the horizontal is not zero, i.e. we're moving, uh, then we set our macro to be uh, forward. Now remember in the step event, we have the sprite changing according to input and action. So let me just drag that over. We have it set to input and action. Now here we have input forward. Else if horizontal is uh, basically zero, uh, then we need to change it back to idle. Again, that will affect just the input, but not the action. Now, if we go down to guard, if we hold the down key, which in this case is S, we basically go into the guard state and the same goes with the attack key. Right. Again, please pause the video. If you have any difficulties, then don't forget, you can always ask questions in the comment section below that it's what it's for, basically. So if we press the attack key, uh, we can go straight into the attack phase. Now, because the up key doesn't actually have any other function apart from changing what type of attack to play, then we need to have this uh, check first. Um, and that's because in the attack, all we're doing is changing the image speed. We're keeping the input as it was or as it currently is. And then in the action, uh, we're setting it to light attack. Obviously, if you have a heavy attack function, then obviously you would play that as well. Um, you could you could put the uh, action line, so this line here, down here, but then it would uh, it would mess things up a bit. So change it here. I would rather if you're a beginner, I would rather you just have uh, another script that instead of light attack has heavy attack instead. So I think I had it spelled as heavy attack. No, <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what I had it set as. What did I have it set as? My heavy attack. Heavy attack. Yeah. Okay. That's a okay. <laughs> well. Well. Whatever. Um, so make sure that you kind of know what you're doing. Um, again, pause the video if you feel that you need to. Then by all means, do so. So I'm at 13 minutes on my timer, uh, but that's okay. The, lastly, we have guard. Now, guard is a special case in that if we're not holding the down key, um, then we have to go back into the ready state. But if we hold down the attack key, then we have to go into the attack state using the down input. Okay, so that's just something to be aware of because guard also, the well, the down key also has the ability to let your character, you know, block against enemy attacks, uh, you need to be able to make uh, an account for that. So, sorry, you need to be able to account for that. And so we have here um, the down key is also the guard key. If it's something completely separate, like if the guard key is, I don't know, say like a Q on the keyboard, then you don't need to have this. In fact, you can just go straight into the attack phase. Um, but that's just something to be aware of. Seeing as we have to hold the key down in order to actually block, then we need to constantly check for our input if we are in the guard state. But apart from that, everything is pretty straightforward. So hopefully you guys learned something. I will finish off this video by playing uh, the, the code. And again, you know, scrub the video. You guys can like, you know, pull the video back if you have any questions. Um, then hopefully I've answered them in the video somewhere. Uh, and so, you know, pull back the video, pause it, you know, play it at half speed if you need to. Um, but if there are any questions, if you're still confused, then by all means, ask a question. I'm always open to answering questions. I don't, you know, I try not to delay with them. So ask them if you want, uh, or if you need to, especially if you need to. Now, before I leave, I want to tell you guys that there won't be a video next week. Uh, that's because I'll be moving again. Um, so I need to pack and get everything ready. So there won't be a video next week. Instead, there will be a video in the two weeks after that. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, then ask them in the comment section below. Apart from that, guys, that's all for me. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and suggest any new content that you guys would like me to do. But for now, guys, that's all. I'll see you all later. Bye.